But let's dive into this a little deeper. News Nation political contributor and Republican strategist Denise Gitchum is with us for more on this polling. She was also an aide to former President George W. Bush. Good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning, Marnie. How are you? I am great. Let's talk about these numbers, starting with the economy in this poll. You know, unemployment better than it has been, the economy better than most people think it is, but we're still seeing people living paycheck to paycheck. How problematic is that five months out for the Biden administration to, to, to change the mindset of how people are feeling and what they're seeing when they're paying their bills? Unfortunately for the Biden administration, and they've had a lot of messaging issues on this issue because they're so their efforts are fully focused on trying to convince people that things are a lot better for them than they actually are. There's a sense that people feel gaslit because they see the reality of living pay to paycheck to paycheck every single day. They experience it viscerally when they have to cut back on expenses, when they have to cut back at the grocery stores, and when they go to the gas tank. Frankly, I live in California, and it's atrocious, the prices that we're paying for gas. And so when you when you try to tell people that their reality is something different than what they actually experience, the reality that they're living with, it tends to be a messaging con conflict. And what you're seeing reflected in the polls is that people blame him for the, the issues that they're experiencing fairly or not. And so I think the Democrats have some work to do on their messaging. I think some of the Clinton-esque, I feel your pain might go a long way here, but that's gonna really be difficult to message as they're trying to talk about a strong economy and inflation coming down. Unfortunately, wages just can't keep up far enough to make up for the inflation, um, inflationary pressures that we're feeling on prices. Yeah, I mean, I think the reality, right, Denise, can be two things can be true at the same time, right? Unemployment exactly. can't be low, but my water bill is high. My, you know, the price to, right. to cool my home in the summer with these rising temperatures is expensive. How do you make ends meet? Um, how does Donald Trump in these upcoming debates and on the campaign trail make up the difference for people when they feel as though they're struggling financially. How does he capitalize on that? Well, Donald Trump is an expert. Remember, he was a reality TV star before he was ever president. So he understands he does this better than almost anyone else in terms of gauging voter sentiment. He knows what people feel, and he goes in after that emotion, and he capitalizes on it. And it's so much easier, to be fair. It's so much easier when you're not in office than when you are in office trying to defend your record to go after that. But truthfully, people feel, voters overwhelmingly feel, that they were better off under Trump than they were in Biden, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or moderate. That's the sentiment that people have. And so for him to go back and talk about what it was like, do you remember what it was like you know, four years ago when I was still in office and how well you were doing will be incredibly effective on the number one issue, which is the economy and the corollary issue of inflation this fall. When people go to the voter, to the, to the ballots, they're going to think about who was my life better under? You know, was I better off four years ago or today? And James Carville, I always like to invoke the, the amazing Democratic strategist who said, you know, it's always about the economy. So I think we'll see. I think we'll see what we're seeing now continue as a trend in terms of Trump's slight advantage at the polls. No matter what happens in regards to, you know, the trials or anything that comes his way, I think that he's going to ultimately prevail as our polling shows, um, at least for now. If something dramatic happens in the economy, things can always change. We've got a convention where everyone will get a little bump. We've got a debate coming up, which can also change things. But ultimately, it will be the economy that I believe voters will, will base their vote on. Right. And a lot of Republican voters, independent voters, some seemingly willing to put aside what they think about the former president, some of the things he said and done, and the ethical questions around his actions, and if it just comes down to the economy, uh, may sway his way vote-wise. Uh, RFK Jr. desperately wants into this race. He wants on the debate stage. And voters are recognizing that he's picking up momentum. Does he have enough runway is the question. He is more popular among Republican, Hispanic, and young voters. Does he deserve a spot? And should that be part of the conversation? I think it's so American of us to want to have options. You know, we have a free market. We like options. We like, we just like it when there's more people to choose from and more ideas to choose from. And so I think the notion of having a third party candidate, and pardon me for being a little cynical as a Republican strategist, but it's sort of romantic, right? Like we get to believe for a moment that there's, there's somebody else that can maybe prevail and bring a different conversation in the mix. 
You know, this is especially true in a time when 60 percent of voters aren't interested in having either Donald Trump or Joe Biden on the ticket or having to cast a vote for them. And so I do really think that I understand that sentiment of a third party sort of option. The problem is he spent so much money. RFK has spent so much money trying to get on the ballots in 50 states that it really gives him no extra bandwidth, financially speaking, to run a proper campaign. Also, he's really not speaking to the issues that most Americans are, are focused on, which is the economy and immigration. He's really seen as that niche um, alternative that talks about health, which is something all of us care about, but it's not driving our vote emotionally. And so I think that when you see him you know, come out as an alternative, it's mostly because of people's dissatisfaction uh, with the two candidates that are in either party, but it really doesn't factor much into the voter enthusiasm level specifically for him. Yeah. Health, the environment, he's focused a little bit on the border. I guess the question come November will be um, how do his supporters sway uh, when they go to the ballot box? Denise, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you and good morning to you.